Hello fellow developers. In this video, I want to be talking about internationalization. So internationalization is basically our ability to translate text. Right here I have an example. So here we have a short menu, and if we change that text, for example, to German and hit apply, it changes the text everywhere. And if we hit that to, to French, it changes the language to French. Don't worry if, it's, uh, if the translation is a bit rough, that's because it's from Google Translate, but you basically get the idea. So we want to be able to import our translation or our translated text, and uh, we want to be able to change them throughout the whole application. So let us hop in the editor and see how we can achieve that. So here we have a fresh project from the marketplace. And what I will do is I will go into our UI map um, just because the example is already there. So I'm going to in examples, maps, map demo UI. And then if you fly over here, um, we see that we have our menu right here. That's just one we saw in the intro. I'm simply going to use that. So, um, if we hit play, we can see under general we have our menu between our levels, and we can switch that, just as we saw in the in the intro. So now we want to introduce our own text, and for that I'm going to create a new actor, call that tutorial, and this is going to be and a simple actor and it's going to be pp underscore i i 18 and tutorial and you will see this i 18 n quite a lot it's uh, just a common uh, common shortcut for internationalization um so you have don't have to write out this this 20 word long word a uh, 20 letter long word and in here i'm going to just put a text render and yeah maybe center that and this is the text that we want to have translated so um now if we drag this in the world we want to obviously create us or have um, a translated version of that text and this is what we can do inside our event graph so what we could for example do is on begin play we could set the text of the text render, set text, and we can, ins ins instead of directly writing in it here, we can let it go through the translate function. And what the translate function does, um, it uh, basically takes an input and it tries to look it up in a data table. And if it finds the entry in a data table, it will um, use the, the found entry instead. If it doesn't find the key in the data table, then it uh, will just take the key instead and put it in as text. So um, the first what we always have to do in, in the context field, always if you see context, just put in self. This is like the world context because the translation function um, basically needs that. You uh, see that quite uh, more often in um, general functions uh, that were used in a library. Um, so just remember, if you see context, just put in self and then you're good to go. Um, the important thing is actually the i18n key. And if we look in that, it's a combination of a key and a data table. And so what it does, it will try to look up the key, whatever we write in here, in a data table. So if, for example, I write in br is great. Um, if there's no data table set or it doesn't find the key, it will just use the key as a text instead. So if you plug in, plug that in. Now we can see if we hit play, they will just say on our text render, VR is great. That's because it just uses the key instead. You quite often find that um, because it, yeah, it's, it's uh, quite inconvenient uh, to write all the translations beforehand. Sometimes you won't do want to change text and stuff like that. So this is simply the placeholder that we're going to use. But once our application is kind of re done and ready and we want to have the internationalization done, we definitely want to have this translated. So what we have to do is we have to create ourselves a data table. Um, we find that under miscellaneous data tables. And there we have to take the i18 and struct. Uh, you kind of have them duplicated. I don't know why that is, because they both are in the same uh, location. It's basically uh, just one exists, but for some reason it lists two of them. So uh, you're going to go just taking any one of them. And 
Um, I'm going to call that data table and I'm going to call that i18n and that's going to be our tutorial. Um, and the way a data table works is if it's just a list of, uh, of entries. And if you create a new key here, um, the key is what we're going to be looking for. So um, how do I change the, the row key? Yeah, let's uh, I just double uh, click on the on the row name, and uh, let's call that VR is great. This is going to be our key. Now we have to uh, put in our translations here, and uh, I've prepared some of them, and I'm just going to copy them in there so we can use them. Perfect. So now we have um, our translated list, one, one entry in our data table, and oh, you missed the Italian part. Uh, let's let's put that in. Or oh, there's going to be one missing. Perfect. No, it's still not. Enter. Okay, perfect. Now I took it. And uh, so now that we generated our data table, we just have to ensure that this key is being found. So this key is being used right here. And now we can set which data table we're going to be using. And this is going to be our A18N tutorial. And now if we hit play, we see that it already took the text. So where does he take the current language from? Um, this is going to be found in the... Um, in, in the game instance. So if we move inside the game instance, we can see that we have a variable here called current language. And if we just take that current language and, for example, change it to Spanish, we see that if we hit play, he will print us a Spanish version of the, of, of the game. Um, but obviously, um, we want to change the uh, game during runtime. And uh, the game instance also has a um has a function for that and that's going to uh, that's called set new language and that's exactly what we're going to use so um so in this actor directly um actually that wouldn't be so nice because we we do want to have an interface uh, that actually shows us um the the current language that we're using so for example if we hit play we could use this interface um, right here, and we could see our, our current language is Spanish, and I will change that. But we don't see this language changing. So why is that happening? Um, that's because this language, uh, the um, the text still has to kind of receive the information that it needs to be changed, and for that we have an interface. So um, there we we can add an interface to our actor. So our tutorial actor now should uh, get the ability to know when a new language has been set and it should set the text to this new language. And for that, we go on a class settings and add an interface. And that's going to be the i18n interface. And now that gives us a function and we could um, implement that event. And instead of running it only on begin play, we want to run the language whenever the update language is being hit. So whenever a new language has, uh, is going to be set, it's, uh, this function is going to trigger, and then uh, the text is being updated. So now if you hit play, we can see that the text is not being translated, but if we actually trans change the text now, the text is being translated at this moment. So um, why is that? The, the text still needs to be translated at least once when it's going to start. That's why on begin play, we just hit an update language here. Um, just apply it on begin play. And now we can see that it has a current language as we change it. And if we change it now, the, the language is being changed. OK. So um, what can we do? We could also create our own 
little interface to change our language ourselves. Um, obviously, you can take a look into inside the widget, and this is what I would probably recommend in all times, uh, every time, because um, changing the language through a, a UI interface is normally what you want to be able to, uh, what you want to be doing. Um, but for example, you could also just um, set uh, get main game instance and obviously call self always when you see the context just just hit put in self and there you have the uh, the, the function set new language and then you can set any new language that you want and um, for example what I could be doing uh, just for fun is I could uh, let uh, this uh, this event change the language um, in in a regular interval um, so timer by event I'm gonna take in one second and add custom event and going to change language. So you could have an actor that uh, changes the language um, as, as you please. And um, I'm going to get run, um, so random int in range. I'm going to take one to four and um, that needs to be a byte. Plug that in here, and then what we will see is that he will change our language just by random every every second. This is what this thing does. So it's completely useless, but it's uh, for you for you to see that the the language um, can be set through this function. So the set new language function is the one that you maybe want to use in your uh, interface. So the the last thing that I want to explain about um, the internationalization is that obviously you don't want to have just these five um, languages. You may want to have more, and for that you have to edit the struct itself. So um, you obviously have a um, the i18n struct, and let's yeah close this up and search for i18n. This is going to be this struct. And uh, there you have basically have the list of the languages in. And if you want to have a new language um, or replace an old one, uh, I would recommend you to, uh, first of all, I, I would recommend you first to, to be changing the, uh, these parts. But um, uh, you can also be adding new languages. So um, uh, is, yeah, let's, let's say we want to add Dutch. So now the uh, string uh, we we added an entry to the struct. We also need to add it, edit the, the enum. Um, it's also called i18n, 17, 18, and that's going to be Dutch. And now we, if we see in the in our data table, um, we have our new entry Dutch. And um, I'm just going to call that this is Dutch. And one last thing that we have to do is we have to associate the enum with um, the struct. And uh, we find that in the uh, translation uh, table. So if we go into our AF core libraries and the flip core, you find the translation function, which we were using the whole time. And there you can go into um, the translation function of the game state. Um, and here's basically the magic that happens with translation. It's, it's really a very, very simple um, function that it goes through. And it basically looks up the data table and matches the string that it gets to the enum that it finds. And if you create a new one, then you do want to ensure that this is being matched, or else it won't find any translation for, for that. So since we have done that, um, we should already be seeing that we have a new translation. So if we hit play, um, this thing is being translated. I will um, refrain it from 
from actually auto translating because that's a bit annoying. I'm going to remove that. So now the sentence isn't auto translating anymore. So here in our menu, we can see that we cannot go past Italian. That's because our widget still needs to be modified. So let's quickly do that. We go into blueprints, widgets. Um, this is a palette widget and it's in the settings and we have the widget palette settings general. And there we see the widget that it, we have been using the whole time. And uh, now we can add ourselves a new entry here. So click on plus and add Dutch as an entry. And um, as you can see, you can also have the data table right here. And so what this basically does is um, it already translated all the other texts. So um, that's because we, we saw all the translation already happening for all the other texts when we, when we switch the languages. And all this text also uses the same kind of logic that we introduced just uh, a few minutes ago of using the interface to translate to all these different fields into, into different texts. And actually, it's a good habit to take a look into the existing uh, data table. And the existing data table already shows us all the translation. And these are all the translations that we already saw in the widget happening. And here we also see the, the different translations of the different languages. And uh, very important is we also have this new column right here. But keep in mind, this column is empty. So what it will basically do, it will find the translation um, key, and it will translate it, and it will replace it with whatever is in here for when we change to Dutch. So our widget is going to be uh, going to appear empty until we actually add all these fields in here. Um, so let's take a look at what this looks like. If we hit play, we can see uh, under general that we can now go past Italian. And if we hit apply, we can see that it, it does find the translation, but it doesn't find the translation over on our widget. Um, or better said, it does find the translation, but it replaces us with none. That's because the column was still empty. Um, and this is basically all that I wanted to explain for this video. Um, I, we definitely went over of how to create our own translations, how to um, uh, translate our text, how to set new languages, and uh, very important, uh, how to add new languages to the list of, of our internationalization. And um, I really like this concept of uh, how this translation is being done. I think it's it's quite easy to see. And it, it does have the advantage that we can work inside uh, CSV files um, and just upload them to data tables. So what I normally do is I work in uh, in uh, in normal data uh, in normal tables like an Excel table or a Google uh, Google Sheets table, and I will export that to a CSV file, and um, then I can you know, just import that automatically into Unreal. So the workflow there is quite fast and exporting and importing right there. And then you can just give your data tables to somebody else and he can he can fill them via Excel or something like that. So um, I hope that was uh, quite understandable and I will hopefully see you in the next video.